Hello, and thank you for joining us for this peer exchange entitled Managing Clostridium Difficile Infections in the Community. C. diff infections, traditionally considered a top concern for hospitals and long-term care facilities, are increasingly being recognized as a cause of diarrhea in the community setting too. Additionally, the community population may lack some of the traditional risk factors adding to the prevention and management challenges this disease presents. This peer exchange with a panel of experts in infectious diseases and gastroenterology will focus on the optimal management of C. diff infections in the community and will also include a discussion on antimicrobial stewardship. I'm Dr. Peter Salgo. I'm a professor of medicine and anesthesiology at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons and an associate director of surgical intensive care at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Now joining me for this discussion is Dr. Lawrence Brandt, Professor of Medicine and Surgery at Albert Einstein College of Medicine and Emeritus Chief of the Division of Gastroenterology at Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx, New York. Dr. Eric DeBerkey, Associate Professor of Medicine at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, Missouri. Dr. Daniel Friedberg, Assistant Professor of Medicine for the Division of Digestive and Liver Diseases at Columbia University in New York, New York. Dr. Dale Gerding, Professor of Medicine at the Loyola University Chicago Stritch School of Medicine in Maywood, Illinois, and research physician at Edward Hines Jr. VA Hospital in Hines, Illinois. And Dr. Yoav Galan, Associate Professor of Medicine at Tufts University School of Medicine and infectious disease physician at Tufts Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. I want to thank all of you for joining us. This is going to be an interesting discussion, I'm sure. So why don't we just jump right in. We have to discuss, first of all, the bacterium itself. Clostridium difficile. And I want to talk about some of the symptoms associated with this thing, both in the hospital and in the community uh, setting. So why don't you start us off, Dr. Galan? Well, um, Clostridium difficile, as we all know, is an infectious uh, disease that affects the gastrointestinal tract, and the most common symptom is diarrhea or loose stools, with uh, many of the patients actually having cramps, and uh, fever is not very uncommon as well. Uh, severe cases can develop sepsis and uh, can actually uh, deteriorate. But do you, do you get, let me just be clear, do you get septic from C. diff or is that because of transmigration of bacteria across the, the gut wall? So it is confined to the gastrointestinal tract right. and you usually get septic um, uh, or you get dehydrated and, and, and you can perforate your, uh, your colon okay. as a complication as well. The okay. symptoms... Yeah. The symptoms of those who develop that in the community may be milder uh, on the average, um, and the likelihood of severe disease in the community is slightly uh, reduced as compared to the uh, disease in, uh, in the hospitals. Now, why is that? Why would the same bug cause disease that's different in the community very, uh, versus the, the disease it causes in hospitalized patients? Anybody understand that? Uh, well, I think to some degree it depends on which type of community C. diff you're talking about. So, so what Dr. Golan was talking about there, I think with the milder symptoms with the, is with that community associated C. diff where someone hasn't had a recent hospitalization. So in that population tends to be younger and healthier. And so when C. diff causes symptoms, it tends not to be as severe just because they're younger and healthier and be, but are able to withstand the C. diff facility Yeah, I mean the patients in my ICU were all there because they're sick to begin with. Most of them didn't get to my ICU because it's surgical because of C. diff. So when C. diff hits them, it's, it's a sledgehammer. Is that, is that what you're implying? Yeah, yeah. So, so older, sicker people will have less reserve, just like a bloodstream infection. Someone who's okay. old and sick and gets a bloodstream infection is more likely to end up in the ICU than someone who's younger and healthier who ends up with bacteria in the blood. Peter, I, I, I want yeah. to jump in with sure. just uh, one thing uh, with regard to the concept of sepsis because uh, we actually studied this, and for those who like detail, the three most common organisms uh, to account for the sepsis, one clearly was not the C. difficile itself, but it was Klebsiella, it was E. coli, and it was Staph albus from really? the skin. How does, how does that work? I mean, I can understand the middle one there, E. coli, which is a gut bug, but why Klebs and why Staph albus? It's a contaminating organism. These are, septic, these are uh, people who are usually in the hospital at this time. They're on antibiotics. It may have a, just a facilitative kind of a uh, response. I don't think it's well understood, but it, it was a clear uh, top three. That's, that's fascinating. It's wow. interesting that patients go into shock with C. diff, um, but we hardly ever find C. diff in the blood. It's almost always absent. But we think what's happening is that 
they're actually leaking toxin into their circulation. And this toxin in animal models has been shown to be a cardiotoxin, and that may be the mechanism. But we've had a very difficult time documenting that in patients because we don't have a sensitive enough okay. assay for toxin in the blood. And these are not uh, patients who have had 20 or 30 bowel movements uh, a day, patients who can't get off the toilet and are dehydrated, and that's the mechanism of their shock. That, that's, that's correct. They, their hydration is okay, but they still go into shock. Yeah, but then you get dehydration. Shock. Dehydration and leading to shock as well. Uh, fever, dehydration, leading to shock, right. There was also, there was a very interesting study that looked at the readmission rates for patients who are hospitalized with C. diff infection, compared them even among other patients with sepsis. They have among the highest rates of readmission of any patients, which I think reflects how sick the underlying substrate is, mm -hmm. how sick those group of patients are. All right, I think, I think this discussion is uh, important because in the mind of um, quite a few physicians, C. diff means diarrhea, but in fact, the consequences of C. diff could be pretty bad. Uh, the most recent data from the CDC suggests that uh, almost 30,000 uh, Americans die within a month of being diagnosed with C. diff, and their assessment is that of those, about half are attributable to Clostridium difficile, and that really makes C. diff one of the more deadly organisms okay. that we get infected with. 30,000, 30,000. So give me a numerator and a denominator here. In other words, what's the mortality rate from this disease, all comers? Well, um, you know, C. diff has not been a reportable infection for a long period of time, and so some of our est estimates of uh, incidents are uh, maybe uh, uh, underrepresenting the actual occurrence. The most recent data that I know from the CDC speaks about almost half a million Americans that get it, with about 30,000 of those who die within a month. Of those, half uh, are attributable. So that's pretty substantial. So if you, want a, if you want a percentage, I think at least based on data from 2011, uh, if uh, you have 350,000 uh, cases per year and you have 30,000 deaths, you're somewhere around 6.5%. That's enormous. That's huge. And, you know, nobody here mentioned toxic megacolon in all of this. Is that all part of this, or, or is toxic megacolon off in a corner by itself? Yeah. So actually, you know, we've done some research where actually most of these deaths aren't occurring immediately. You don't start to see an increase in death until about 30 days after the C. diff infection. And, and so again, we've been talking about many of these people with C. diff already sick to start with, and then C. diff hits them again. It's just another physiological insult, but it takes them down, the, down a notch, and many of these people then are unable to recover after that okay. additional insult. And that's, that's the way all the data uh, are reported, 30-day mortality. That's, okay. It's a very important but number. Let's be definitional just for a moment then. Are we attributing their death to C. diff, or is it death associated with C. diff? It makes a difference. About, about it? half is directly attributable to C. diff itself. Even so, yeah. that's an enormous yeah, we're, yeah, we're doing some analysis of the Medicare data and finding about a 10% attrib attributable uh, death due to C. diff. So 10% of people um, with C. diff are dying because of the C. diff. But also, Peter, it's often very hard to discern cause of death for in these kinds of studies. You know, you know that a patient starts on a spiral, and it can be difficult to determine what initially led to the decompensation.